Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd come out and try out this all new emulsion Cat Labs 320 Pro. They claim it's an emulsion like you've never seen before. I've already shot a roll, I did some portraits the other night. I was quite impressed. Why is it left my lights on? I could watch I'll just step forward. <laughs> step forward. I'll yeah. step forward. Oh. So turn your body in the other way, remember the light, that's your friend. I've always said hurrah and viva la film whenever I see a small business pumping out new films for us film nuts to play with. When you're looking online for a film to shoot amongst the powerhouses of Ilford, Foma and Kodak, we see an array of attractive looking films with funky packaging and name brands. Some are rebranded, some claim to be new emulsions, some are surveillance films and some are low speed duplication films. And it's all too tempting for the newbie film shooter until they realise they've just spent twice as much for a film based on its trendy packaging. You live and learn. And this is Catlab's latest film, 320 Pro. Catlab's claims this is a brand new emulsion, not to be confused with their discontinued 320 without the Pro bit, which many have said was Kodak's 5222. I never tried that before, so I can't comment. But there is a whole bunch of processing times available, but there's no data sheets. But let's face it, who cares about data sheets? Just go and shoot the film, have fun, and see if you like it, right? I'm not sure why there is no data sheets, but I know that if I made a new emulsion, I'd want to give out as much information as I can about, uh, other than processing times. Maybe it's not always possible, I don't know. Or maybe I'm hiding the film's true identity. I'm not suspecting Cat Lab's 320 Pro to be an already existing film, so I'm not going to speculate, but what I do want to do is shoot the Cat Labs and the Cine Steel side by side and see for myself. I don't have any densitometer machines, so all I can do is decide by my eye and the print. So that was one roll that I shot on some portraits, and I shot it at 200, it says it's recommended at 200. It also says it's recommended in 510 Pyro, but I developed that roll in Kodak D76. And I've come today to this little sleepy village called Shankly, a little thatch village on the Isle of Wight. And uh, I'll just read to you what Cat Lab say about this film on their website. <laughs> So they say Catlab's X320 film is a classic medium speed film designed for array of shooting conditions available in 35mm and 120 as well. It's an ideal street photography film, um, offering the versatility and unique characteristics. So Catlab say on their website that it produces uh, unique deep grey tones with an almost silvery metallic look, suitable for low light or available light conditions. They reckon you can push it up to 1600 in low light conditions. Um, for best results, it says rate it at 200 ISO when shooting outdoors or under, under bright light, bright conditions, and push it as high as 1600 when shooting artificial or low light conditions. And they say it's an emulsion like you've never seen before. It says on the box that it's made in the European Union, manufactured, sorry, Engineered, engineered, engineered in Boston. Is that right? I've got to have my glasses on. Mate, make these print bigger, will ya? Can't see it. <laughs> Made in the European Union, engineered in Boston, MA, is that Massachusetts, USA? Um, and I shot this the other night, and they're certainly true to their word, because I've never seen a yellow dye come out of a film. Um, and there's only a few European factories that I know that still make films, Fomapan being one of them, Oro, been another. I'm not sure if there's any more that I'm missing out. Obviously in, in the UK we've got Ilford, but um, emulsion like you've never seen before. So I'm interested to see what it does outside. I've already seen what it does inside. So I'm interested to see what it does outside. And uh, later on I'll get in the dark room and make a couple of prints. So I'm shooting this at 200 speed and uh, I've done a little bit of metering. It's giving 160 f8 on this scene here. It's quite a light overcast day, so it's quite nice. A couple of people over there sitting at that shop. And the thing is, like all of these uh, films, <laughs> if you go online, you can see a whole array of uh, fancy, funky, wonderful looking films. And just jump onto a popular website that sells um, film, photography film, and you're presented with <laughs> all these funky looking, wolf man here, look. 
Lomography L, Grey, it's an old classic. Babylon, super positive. You've got all these funky films, and they're great. You know, people can, you, newbies coming into film photography can jump on these sort of sites and get a little bit more excited about shooting film. Oh, I fancy trying a bit of this, or I fancy trying a bit of that today. It's fun and it's exciting, and I think it keeps film alive, to be honest with you. Frankenstein, 15 pound? You what? I hope it loads itself into the camera for that. This roll comes out about 10 pound a roll, this cat lab stuff. Um, we can get Ilford FP4 for like six pound a roll. Um, and they've been doing this stuff for years, manufacturing film. But I guess it's quite good to see all this stuff online. If you went on the website and just saw a few films, Ilford, a little bit of Kodak, some foam pan, it'd be a little bit boring. When I first started shooting film, that's all I was pretty much getting. Um, but now there's a whole range of wonderful films especially for newbies to come in and get a bit excited about. They're expensive, of course. Some ain't, some are. But um, I think it keeps the film community going, you know? And us film nuts love shooting. How you doing, all right? <laughs> Someone waving at me there. Don't know if they know me. And I like taking pictures of places where I live, um, you know, different areas, different villages and whatever. One day this is all gonna change. So 20, 30 years time, all my negatives, even if I ain't here anymore, um, someone will find these negatives and go, oh Christ, that was so and so um, back in the day, like we look back in the 60s and 70s now. So walking around your streets and taking a few shots of some of the shops, some of the premises and daily life, years to come, it be, might, might be quite interesting to someone. I have great pleasure in getting down on my knees on roadsides and taking photographs with a camera like this. Apart from the high-vis vest, people think you're a speed unit or something. And they start slowing down. Brilliant. Let's go over, develop this film, see what we got. See how Cat Labs 320 Pro performed outside for me today. I know it performed the other night when I was taking those um, portraits with Kyle. Um, and in case you're wondering, those um, portraits that I took, a simple background, simple one, strobe light setup it's a rembrandt look if you want to call it that but you're kind of getting some of the shadow detail in the face and the light is just wrapping around it's a little bit like window light except mine was a little bit harsher but i liked it and that's the style of portrait that i like doing i don't like over lighting portraits um i stick a light in the background to make a white key back you know high key background or something like that but i don't bother with rims and and snoots and stuff like that for the hair I'm not really into all that, just a nice strong portrait, which is what I think I did with Kyle the other day. He liked them anyway, that's the main thing. So I'm back home now, and I did say that I was going to develop him 510 pyro, but um, I'm not quite sure the times for shooting at 205-10 pyro, so I decided to go for uh, Kodak D76, which is exactly what I used on those portraits, and I like the way that they came out. Like I said, I think it's 10 and a half minutes or 10 minutes they recommend for D76, one part to one part, but my D76 is a little bit weaker than anyone else's. I don't know what happened when I mixed it up, um, or it could have been a bad batch. I don't know, but I just noticed it gives me thinner negs at the normal developing times that others recommend. Shut it, George. And uh, so I just winged it. It went 14 minutes and it come out all right. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. The film's already sitting inside the can. There's my D76, there's the water, uh, one part to one part, 300 mil of water, 300 mil of D76. See what happens. So in goes my D76, make that up to 600. Give it a little stir, make sure my temperature's on par. Yep, bang on 20 degrees. 14 minutes on the clock. And off we go. In goes the dev. Just normal inversions, do five to start, and then five on the minute, every minute. One, two, three, four, five. Now comes the boring part. 14 minutes of this. That's why I like stand developing sometimes and pyro, because you can just let it go for half hour, whatever the time is, 
and um, do other things. But I have to babysit this now for 14 minutes and then I've got to wash it, uh, stop it rather, and then fix it as well. Coming up to the first minute of inversions. One, two, three, four, five. These tanks are bloody leaking. And uh, I'll be interested to show you guys afterwards the uh, anti-elation dye that comes out of this developer. It's yellow. Do you remember that knit comb stuff? The knit nurse used to come around to school years ago, make sure you didn't have any knits, because we all lived on flea bag estates at the time. The knit nurse would sit there with a metal comb and start brushing through your hair trying to find knits. And she'd have this yellow liquid sitting there. She'd dip the comb in. So like the next kid would come along, she'd dip the metal comb in this liquid and start doing his hair as well. No wonder we all got bloody knits. So 14 minutes has passed. I've developed it exactly the same as I did yesterday on the portraits. And I'll just show you the um, anti-elation dye coming off the... Look at that, yellow. So if any of you guys know of any films that come out yellow like that, I don't. I don't think I've ever seen any. Foam of pan is green. Look at that. Yellow. Moment of truth. Oh. I thought it was something going strange with the camera. Look, missed some frames there. Oh, bugger. Got out one. Yeah, okay. Well, we've got some pictures anyway, and they look all right. Let's hang these out. Let's hang these out to dry what's left of them. <laughs> So with me dark, I'm about to make a couple of prints of Kyle. Um, I'll show you that in a moment. I'll show you the prints that I make. But this is the um, the <laughs> it's the Cat Labs film that I put in the Yashica 124G Mac G. Um, and look at that, I missed a load of frames there. You could see um, when I went to take photographs, I took my first shot. And as I went to um, advance the film, which should only be half a turn and back again, um, I ended up going like this, as though it was advancing to the first frame, and I thought, well, that's really strange. I'm sure that I already advanced the um, the film to the first frame, frame number one. So I went, I went like that, and it locked. I went back and took the same shot, but I've not got a clue how that worked. Um, I really don't know. I, like I said, I'd already advanced the film, film to frame number one, got on location, and it wanted to advance again for some reason. Maybe one of you guys in the comments can let me know what the hell went wrong, because I don't know. But uh, I still managed to salvage a few of those negatives. So these are my portrait negs here. This is the Cat Labs 320X Pro film, or X320 film, and this is the Cinesteel, uh, the Kodak 5222 cinematic film. This one's got slight more punch to it than the Cat Labs, you can see it. Uh, both shot at 200 and in the same lighting conditions, same aperture, same camera settings and everything. Um, and I was quite impressed, I must admit, with how the Cat Labs performed on that one. I also like the Kodak Double X as well. God, that grain, that grain is so fine, even with that D76. That's amazing. So I came in the darkroom just to see how those negatives printed out, and they printed out really well. I did have to use a contrast zero filter on the Cat Labs film and also on the Cine Steel film as well. I don't think the D76 cooked them because I've, I've, I've done my test beforehand and in fact the Cat Labs film, if anything, was a little bit thin. Um, but even if I developed it longer, that would have crushed it and made it even more contrasty. So quite a, I'd say quite a contrasty film. Of course, that all depends on down to your development and how you shoot the film. In this case, I found it to be quite contrasty. It kind of reminds me, the actual base of the film or the material of the film, kind of reminds me, it's quite thin. It reminds me of a foamer pan film. It's a bit... It's, very, it's a thin film, it's not, it's, it's just, it's very similar to Foam and Pan 400 film. And also Roly film as well, that's kind of got the same sort of uh, thin material as well. I have seen that yellow dye before, Roly Retro 400S, that's where I've seen it. And the knit nurse at school. But one thing I did notice with the Cat Labs film is the uh, Kyle's blue eyes. They were dark. He's got nice bright blue eyes, but they didn't come out on that film as they did on the Cine still. 
so that again that's when you need a data sheet so i wish i had a data sheet so i could look at it and go what's the spectral curve on it what you know what's the colors doing on this on this film the only way to do it myself is to buy more rolls of that film put it on color palettes and do some testing but like i said earlier on all these films are out there for us to try and test and uh, have a play with and it's nice that all this stuff is coming on the market i'm sure that cat labs film would be brilliant for somebody in their field of photography i don't think it's going to suit mine because i've already got my films that i like that i prefer for my style of photography but someone else it might hit the spot hit the sweet spot and I go bang that's the film for me every time I take this sort of photography but all these fun and funky films are all out there for us to try so you know don't take my word for it don't take anyone's word for it if you're curious go and grab a roll and see for yourself if it works for you so I've got to say a massive thanks to Gary Geezer for sending me that film a couple of rolls of that to play with cheers Gary for that and I hope you're getting on well with your your roles mate let us know what you think and anyone else that's used this film I'd like to know and if there's any data sheets uh, that you found on this because I couldn't find any also let us know as well because I don't think um, Cat Labs have got one out yet maybe they will maybe they won't <laughs> who knows anyway guys thanks a lot for watching keep shooting and I'll catch you next time